Now, rights activists uh, say Saudi Arabia has lobbied heavily against a UN probe into possible war crimes committed by Riyadh and its allies in Yemen. Activists say that Riyadh is against a Western resolution, which would extend the mandate of UN investigators who have documented crimes in Yemen. Geneva-based UN Human Rights Council is set to debate the motion Thursday. An expert group set up by the council in 2017 has repeatedly said the Saudi-led airstrikes and shelling may amount to war crimes. Meanwhile, a rights advocate said the UN rights bodies in action under Saudi pressure would be a stain on its credibility. Tens of thousands of Yemenis have been killed and millions displaced since Saudi Arabia launched a devastating war and imposed an all-out blockade on Yemen in early 2015. Joining us now for the program is uh, Danica Katovic, a Yemen campaign coordinator at Code Pink. Joining us from uh, Chicago, Illinois, and Jason Enruhe, political commentator. Joining us from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Hello, and I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I guess, uh, Danica, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on this probe and what Riyadh is afraid of? Yeah, I mean, this would not be the first time that the government of Saudi Arabia has tried to lobby their, themselves out of accountability. Um, every year, the Saudi government spend, spends millions in the United States to evade accountability and rehab their image to the American people um, for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, which we just passed the three-year anniversary of. And the UN has been so, so useful in helping anti-war activists locate uh, war crimes that have happened since the war or since Saudi intervention started in 2015. And I can only assume that they are trying to hide and cover up more war crimes. Thank you, Danica and Jason. I would like to uh, welcome you to the program. Now, Jason, this is one taking, taken right out of the playbook of uh, the U.S. when it came to Iraq and Afghanistan. They shut down any probe that may uh, basically reveal uh, war crimes by their troops in those two countries, along with the U.K. And now, are they possibly going to get behind Riyadh on this and try to help uh, the Saudis cover up atrocities in the last seven years committed on Yemeni soil. I think that's very much going to be the case. So this is something that the United States has repeated more than once. It, you know, previously with Donald Trump uh, essentially uh, attempting to sanction the International Criminal Court, uh, then now the U.S. is placing pressure on the uh, the U.N. and other agencies who are trying to investigate possible war crimes in Afghanistan. So I think the United States is probably going to back Saudi Arabia for much of this, given that there's been a great deal of U.S. political and military support for the ongoing crisis inside of Yemen. I mean, it's obviously that the uh, vehicles, missiles, weapons, etc., were sold from the United States into the tune of uh, more than $100 billion, I believe, that went into the Saudi Arabian military that went on to kill people in Yemen, all of which was uh, without a doubt, I mean, there's no one that denies that what happened, what, what, what happened there and what is continuing to happen there is a war crime right now. And I think it's very likely that the United States, given the amount of culpability they have in that for supplying weapons to Saudi Arabia and political support, will probably back them in trying to keep them from being criticized. And Danica, at the same time, it wouldn't be a surprise if the U.S. threw the Saudis under the bus because we saw what they did with the, uh, like the, the, the Kurds in, uh, in Syria when the, when the Turks came into Kurdish territory. So there is a chance that the U.S. will not back an ally in a time of need. How do you see this thing playing out? Do you see accountability ultimately for the people of Yemen? So ever since February, when President Biden announced that the U.S. was ending offensive uh, support for the Saudi coalition, a lot of anti-war activists were excited about that, but we needed a lot of clarity about what that meant. Uh, Biden promised to make Saudi Arabia a pariah. Um, he promised to change, fundamentally change the relationship the U.S. had with Saudi Arabia. Um, but since that has not happened, we did, the U.S. did let up on some support, but just uh, last month, the U.S. State Department approved a up to $500 million sale in helicopter repairs to Saudi Arabia. And the U.S. continues to do diplomatic cover for Saudi Arabia. So although things have changed a little bit, I, I do still worry, especially that the U.S. has skin in the game in these war crimes that the U.S. will continue to cover for Saudi Arabia.
Thank you, Danica. And Jason, we have about a minute left. Your final thoughts, please. I think that this is uh, going to be one, something that Saudi Arabia is going to get away with, at least in uh, this immediate sense. I, I think that because the U.S. has been so strong about the campaign against Yemen, that the U.S. Is, is going to protect them. I mean, it's not unheard of for the U.S. to throw Saudi Arabia under the bus, but I don't think that's going to be the case this time, because it's definitely within U.S. interests for Saudi Arabia to lose any kind of independence it has so that it can join the larger imperialist bloc of the, the, the U.S., Saudi Arabia, Israel, etc. So I think it's definitely within the U.S. interest to protect Saudi Arabia from the from this rightful criticism. And it, it looks like, it, in my, in my opinion anyway, it looks like a good deal of war crimes are going to go unpunished. All right, thank you both for joining us on the program. Danica Katovich from Code Pink joining us out of Chicago, and Jason and Ruhe, political commentator, joining us from Niagara Falls, Ontario. And viewers, that's a wrap for the segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.